yeah, get started. Hi guys, welcome back to the Once You're In podcast. This is um, episode 20. Episode 20? Is yeah. it 20? Episode 20. Yeah, um, do you want to go through a, a prep update? Getting straight into it, aren't we? Um, yeah, another week ticked off. We are now five weeks, five days uh, till the first um, show. Everything is, is being, I'm not going to say everything's moving forward swimmingly because I say that every week. But it is. Um, feel pretty shit. Uh, I think every week now it's going to be where I'm coming on to this day and I feel even more zombie-like. But, I mean, you've got to embrace it. You've got to embrace it. Um, I was I was 99.9 this morning, mate. So first time under 100 kilos. And, uh, and I didn't have my phone on me. I was going to take a photo and try and copy what you do on your story. So I'm hoping I'm still under 100 tomorrow. So then I can put, like, under 100 kilos the first time in like a year or whatever it is so technically i'm now double digits when it comes to kilos still triple digits when it comes to body weight i mean in pounds i'm not i'm not going to be 99 pounds, pounds. Like yeah 99 pounds peeled to the brim uh, i reckon after my peak week protocol i might be for for a few days or whatever imagine um but no everything seemed good um we we did some posing yesterday uh, and we both kind of agreed like quite aggressive over the next month or so trying to probably i'd like to imagine i'll be on stage at like 96 97 but i reckon i'll be a bit lighter than that i'll probably see a sub 95 94 to 96 i'd say and then that'll be prior to, to filling back up so the the next month or so it's so the next four weeks about a kilo to a kilo and a half off per week so two and a half to three pounds which is quite ag aggressive at this stage but it's almost where like i've kind of been going off periods where i've been quite aggressive seeing a decent change then holding off then being quite aggressive and going from there so yeah a fair few tweaks and changes have gone in uh, i don't really know when the obviously it was like a week ago when we did the last one but cardio i did like a little outline but cardio is at 45 minutes on my rest days 30 minutes on my training days bar my lower session which is on 20 minutes uh nutrition uh, carbohydrate rates on training days are coming down tomorrow to just under 400 so it's like 397 uh, currently they were at like 523 um protein and fats pretty much stayed the same they've been like 230 um on training and non-training days fats are at like 36 and 46 i think which is sound i quite like the idea not not, like that. not 225 no no not 225 <laughs> grams of fat um so yeah no, no not, oh, not that not uh, definitely not that. I mean, I mean, if you're not in a gaining phase on 225 grams of fat, like, are you even you really doing? gaining? I can't yeah. even say it. I find it so hard to say. Like, 225 grams shouldn't be followed by fat. It just doesn't no. sound like right. It's hard to even say. Yeah, it's like being like, yeah, man, I'm on 40 grams of protein. So you'd be like, what? <laughs> All right, yeah, so every meal. No, 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 in a day. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, uh, perfect that. And uh, that's that's what my protein would be on if I was ninety nine pounds. Like if I was double digit pounds, it would be. Ninety nine grams of protein a day. Yeah, that would be it. Nah, mate, that'd be it'd be too much, mate. I won't be able to digest it. That's the issue. Um, but no. So yeah, nutrition's in still in a good spot. Rest days, foods. I say quite low, but in reality, because of how it's spaced out i don't actually mind my rest days my rest days are pretty cool so it's like 225 carb um like i said 46 fat if i'm not mistaken and then like proteins are like 228 so non-training days are sound training days are pretty challenging because the only carbohydrates i have really i'm in my like my pre and post workout so therefore mornings i'm okay evenings i'm ruined i've said the same now for the last month and uh and yeah everything seems okay training's in a good spot it's weird because it's not in a good spot physically like mentally if that makes sense like it's, it's a shame and I was, I was saying this uh, on my on my walk yesterday with my mum and i was like and I, was, I was chatting to her about how i'm when i'm training and i'm usually i love being in the gym like i'm i love being in the gym it's the place where i'm always quite confident i enjoy my time there and i think the last like four weeks i've not enjoyed it to the same degree because it's just a sense of just ticking a box and my training performance is spot on like i'm still progressing uh, i think like there's definitely a lot more like kind of sets where i'm a bit more like ah oh, that wasn't as good as i thought it's not why i'm taking plus threes and plus twos like if i can match and take a plus one here or there the vast majority are like plus ones or just load increments or just reps being the same as before but it's more so how i feel like every set i'm having to like channel like the most just for us like a an isolation just to progress i'm like right get your head switched on you need to actually concentrate where i'm not saying i don't do that usually 
but there's that there's that less like in my head it's usually where i'm like right let's, let's fucking go and now it's like i'm battling with myself it's like imagine if you were just really highly fatigued and you just pushed on for a few weeks and it's where training volume so low so it's not where i can really pull much more there will be stuff to pull Definitely but at the same time it's yeah, yeah, no, I don't, no, I don't mean it in the sense of like it's at baseline volume now. It still can come down, but I mean relative to where volume should be at this stage. It's not where I need to be like making drastic changes. But uh, yeah, you're not giving me any assisted reps anymore, which is is quite boring. And to be fair, I, I agree. I said the same to you uh, like a week or two ago. Just I was stopped like, helping you. Much. I was just like, yeah, not helping you anymore. You're not having that rep. I'll rack it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, it's, it's it's an interesting one because like my my psychological kind of perspectives of training are like i love doing the hard shit i love like leaving everything on the table feels like, weird I, doesn't I, it? doing a set yeah. where you don't get that last bit of help like on like a leg extension or yeah. like on like yeah. the t-bar yesterday like it does feel weird but it's what you need to do isn't it yeah exactly so i feel like the tra- training's in a weird situation because like i said i feel like performance is really good it's not where i'm performing any worse and i'm going into sessions and i'm regressing everything's still progressing or maintaining and I'm getting stronger still, but it's more so how I feel. And like the, like after a set, I get off and I'm like, oh God, that like battered me. Where before, like I do a set, the only thing I will say is actually, it's quite enjoyable is my CV is mint. So I can do like a set and within like two minutes, I feel quite good again, but I'm more talking like centrally, like in general, just like just feel a bit like, oh God. Where like when you're fat, you can just throw some weight around and then, yeah, you might be battered from a CV perspective, but you feel pretty like you feel decent and you're like, you're, you're sociable. Like I'm, I'm not at all. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to do anything. It's, it's weird. But again, like it, it's a strange one because you said to me yesterday, like, how do you feel? And I was like, weird. I feel good, but I don't like, it's just a sense of like passing the time, shall we say? which is not a, not a good place to be at. It's a very strange kind of predicament. And it, I've felt like this plenty of times before and I just become very like antisocial and I become very like just driven off what I need to do. And I don't think it's like productive. I wouldn't want to be like this all year round because I probably wouldn't be as, I wouldn't be myself, if that makes sense. So it's just that, that, that drive that like, there's lesser want to do things that aren't productive towards what you need to do on a daily basis. So yeah prep update everything's good um but it's it's a challenging one because it's you don't feel like yourself at times but yeah that's that anything that i missed out there mate anything that you feel like i need to cover i don't think so mate i think you covered everything we said didn't we like over the next four weeks if you aim to lose at the same rate of loss as last week you'll be 94 in a month and then fill up from there in two weeks that's the plan i would say but whether that goes to plan or not, it's hard to say. Uh, but yeah, we were saying yesterday, weren't we? Like in hindsight, we'd like you'd be in. I keep saying we, you'd be in this position maybe three or four weeks ago. But hmm. that's you know you can't you can't predict how a prep's going to go, and it's not as if you're in a bad position at all. Like I'm not saying oh, you're no, way no. behind. You're not behind, but. If you were, let's say, four weeks ago, you were at this point and you were, we were like, yeah, yeah, maybe four to five kilos, we were like, oh, perfect. We can lose it, what, half a kilo a week, which would have been yeah. a, bit, a bit more favorable at this point. But, mate, that's how preps, I feel like that's how preps go, like, almost all the time, yeah, like, unless you're ready hat's really hat's early. Going. Yeah, it's how it's going to be. It's weird because, like, if, if I'm going off my front, like, it's not, and this is more so just from a condition standpoint of, like, I, I'm not trying to step on stage and have any fat. Like in, in general for a physique competitor, you don't need to be absolutely mind blown and peeled. I want to be peeled. So like, it's, it's a challenge because in a weird way, like when I, I remember coming onto a podcast and it was like between 12 and 10 and you were like, why, like, do you not think these are too many changes? And I was like, no, 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 it's the, this is, this, this is, this is what should be happening. And, uh, and in reality, like I said, I want to get a little bit lower than I probably need to. So I can fill back up in the grand scheme of things. I reckon there wouldn't be too much of a visual change if I was to only drop three kilos from this point. And I could do that over the next five weeks, but I want it two weeks out where I'm thinking, right, let's pull back on cardio. Let's pull back steps. Let's from a, an external stress perspective, let's chill, chill out. Let's kind of, you know, cruise into it. I don't want it where a week out, I'm like, Oh my God, I've got to push again. I've, I've still got to push till like literally seven days out. And then it's, it's a rushed last week. I want it where two weeks I'm like, right, 
this is how it's going to be and this is where it needs to be so it's, it's a challenge because like you, you can go the whole prep and be like oh my, my, my front's really lean my back's still not i'm not gonna say it's not fat it's leaner but it's not a, as lean as my front my front's not far off my front would be a week or two if i like in two weeks my front will be ready that's that'll be how it is like i'd say like yeah, my, my, it's, it's, this, in i'd say at 97 your front will be ready i'd say at 94 yeah. 95 your back will be ready yeah yeah i agree i agree so that's what has to be done and to be fair it's a good little gauge to to go off um it is it's the it's the element of prepping should we say like at the end of the day you're only as cliche as it sounds you're only as lean as your your fattest body part well, so we it doesn't matter well, it's like, like, field. we were yeah. saying yesterday weren't we obviously it's your first time competing like it doesn't even matter like obviously it, it, it does hold sort of some warrant that you've that you've dieted before but you mm -hmm. haven't got any recent data of a kind of estimated stage weight like i think when you yeah. started did you think you were like oh i'd like to be above 90 kilos and like now yeah, mate, like, I, yeah. of course you're gonna be above 90 kilos like but yeah. at the time you know you you didn't know that so like the next time the next time you prep you have like all this data and all of you all yeah. of the experience and the knowledge from competing and everything that you'll be like you just obviously you only get better as you go along like right. i think yeah. Obviously, you know, you're the type of character that wants to be your absolute best every time you compete. And I think everybody should. But being realistic, the first time you do anything, it's not the best effort that you have at it, is it? Like the first time you trained, it's not the best you've done it. The first time you coach someone, it's not the best you could do it. Like you always learn and get better as you go along. So like you're only going to get better the first, even if, even if the first show, like you're not at your absolute best, you'll, you'll be so much better just at the one the week after. Just because you've learned, you'll have learned so much from that one show. Yeah, no, I agree. I'm annoyed though. I get to I have to give my mum some money. She uh, she thought I'd be 94 on stage. Like I thought I'd be lighter. So like that that's that's some relevance there. But yeah, like I said, I was uh, I was 80 I was 84 kilos two and a bit years ago, and, and that was very very conditioned. So I thought all right five six kilos up around 90, and the fact that. I'll probably be like 97, 98 on stage. I'd like to imagine after filling up. I mean, it's not a bad thing at all. So yeah, a lot of people could say, oh, well, if you're only two kilos off from that, it's more so just getting my back ready and then filling back up. And Because I'm going to be flatter, that's for sure. I'm, I'm, I've still got an okay amount of fullness across like, my top line. My arms are a little bit flatter, but then I'd also say oh, my arms just a bit smaller. Like my triceps are decent. My biceps definitely need work. So um, it, it's good because it gives me enough data to go off into, into a productive gaining phase post-show which I'm looking forward to. Um, more so looking forward just to kind of cracking on with what needs to be to be made like adjustments to. Like we said, uh, like I've had a few people comment, um, like mention like pro card attempts and stuff. And like, I find it, it's, it's flattering and it's lovely because I'm like, wow, I'm, I put an Instagram story up yesterday. I was like, wow, I'm even in the conversation for that. It's, it's crazy. But at the same time, like I know my level and I'm quite realistic and I'm like, well, I definitely probably need a bit more here. I need a bit more there. And like, I'd most likely be wanting to add, if I was to add five kilos of lean tissue onto my frame, I'd be like, yeah, we're good. We're good. But that's five kilos of tissue that I need. But so I'm like, all right, I'm still, a, I'm still a year or so off. So that'd be, that'd be the goal uh, for, for 2022, 2023 really depends on feedback and how far and what I look like on stage. And, uh, and then we go for there. Uh, once you're in your in episode like 84 reese fit goes pro that's going to be the it's going to be one of the titles so yeah but no all good uh, otherwise like i said just cracking on day in day out doing the do and just that's pretty much it what about you mate how's uh, how's training been you've got a deload approaching aka a weekend away that he's just not going to be training so he's decided i'm going to claim it as a deload which oh, is basically a theory, but he just doesn't want to train and he just doesn't want to say that he doesn't want to train so he's now claiming it as a deload so finn explain how's your training been how's your deload coming up Go for it. You go, on, you go on about how shit you feel, but I don't think you do with how how expressive you Mate, are. I don't know. I don't know how I get the energy. I get like a second. You're not lean. Honestly, mate. I, I don't know why. Like, ask anybody who lives with me. They think I'm a bellend. Yeah, like, I just sit there. Don't the camera and you're a dick. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, I get this weird and like second. It's you get this I'm dick back. energy. No, I'm no, having, I'm having two, two sessions off because uh -uh, I'm in Manchester over the weekend. And also, like, oh I do feel pretty trashed. Like, my back, obviously, it's not great, but I'm not going to go into that because it's just fucking boring talking about it all the time. Um, but I'm working around it. 
changing the approach um, in terms of the the sort of active recovery I guess like we've been treating it as a knot for ages and now we're not thinking it's a knot uh, but I'm not going to go into that because I just can't bother to talk about it uh, but yeah I'm going to take um, Saturday and Monday off uh, I've not had an actual deload so like time off however you want to call it like obviously like seems to be nowadays the terminology of a deload seems to be time off rather than a volume. but yeah I've not had that for as long as I can remember um, COVID. yeah but even then can you, can you call that a deload? I think I missed one session, didn't I? And it was because I had COVID. Yeah. And it wasn't really a good deload. Like I, I literally was feeling like horrendous. So I wouldn't even class that as a deload, really. But I know what you mean. Like it's, yeah, I haven't had, had one in ages. I, I like the devolume approach. I do prefer the devolume approach. But I think with this weekend, the fact that I've got quite a lot on, like me and Shannon haven't had any time. Like on the Monday after the Slater show, we're going to just have a bit of time together in Manchester. Still got work to do. Like I've still got check-ins and that too. So it's not as if we can just have a day where we can do what we want. Um, but even just having that one session off, not only will it help sort of, you know, a little bit in terms of recovery, but also it'll just be nice to have a little bit of time. Um, and like I say, I've not done that in ages. Uh, so yeah, it should be quite good. It'd be quite interesting to see because like I say, the last time I think I've ever had a, a, like a deload has always been for one, like a reason of being ill. And I've been like, oh, I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll call it a deload. Like, I've been like really like grim and been in bed and I've been like, oh, it's a deload. It's like, not it's your, like, you're ill, mate. I haven't had like an actual deload where I take time off. So it'll be quite interesting to see how I feel and how I come back on the, uh, on the Wednesday. So it'll be what, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday off, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday off. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Ends up being Maybe. five days. Do... Yeah, because it's two sessions that we miss, but there are two sessions mm. with a rest day either side. So, yeah, we'll see how I feel. I, mean, I, I think, like, I don't think I, right now, in terms of how I feel, I think it's a good idea. I, yeah. I do feel pretty beat up. Um, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the second show. Um, we got a question about the show, so I might not go into it into too much detail now. Um, but, yeah, I've just been with Slater, like, making some adjustments because. Like his posing wasn't bad at all, but because he is so tall, it it makes it like very hard to judge him against the other guys. So I've um, made some tweaks to his posing to try and help with that, and just some some of them just they do look already quite a lot better. But even like I was just saying, then with the amount that you learn from your first show, like it was the same with Slater. Like even though I you know know how he needs to pose and everything, when you see him against other people, like you can really tell like what needs to change with posing and what he needs to bring up etc but because he's so tall like it is a joke like it's it's you see, like obviously i i'm used to it but then you see him stood next to everyone else and it's like oh my god like he's literally like towering above everyone there was one other guy who was pretty tall i think he was like six three or something like everyone else was sub six foot and he just he just looked like a giant mate um and obviously like unless you're absolutely huge like it's hard to fill out that frame but yeah you can pose to make it look better so we've been doing that see how he gets on this weekend um, but either way it was still it was still a good show he learned so much from it and even just the experience of it like not being he wasn't I wouldn't say he was massively nervous but you could tell like I'm not gonna say like well to be fair when when they brought them all out all the novice guys like they didn't tell them all to stand at the back so everybody just walked right to the front and there was 11 of them so obviously they couldn't all fit so then everyone's cramming like on at the end and trying to like cramp together and then obviously that if that's your first time competing, like and you're a bit like, what the fuck's going on? So like that already kind of like threw him off a little bit. After that he was all right, but he was better in the night show as well. It's a bit it's a bit silly. And then especially knowing that you get an eleven strange. natural bodybuilders on one stage. I mean, how can you even fit eleven natural bodybuilders? It's too big. So you would have thought, you know what, we, we need bigger space. Mate, These bodybuilders. Fucking hell, some of them are a joke. Absolute oh, joke. Yeah. No, no, I saw. Ridiculous, mate. The um, the guy finished third. I don't know if it was the overall or whatever. SSAV fit. Yeah. Is it, is that, yeah, because I saw him at uh, Rotherham, and yeah. I, I thought like he had he looked decent. He was at like, peak off season. I was like, God, he's big. He was he the, he's a big dude. He should have come second. Do you reckon? Yeah. And like, like that Rex One MX or whatever. Yeah, so he he was made to look small, and he's not small at all. No, he was made to look no. like really small by Theo. Yeah, yeah. it is the, the like you realize when you go like the the levels to the sport. Like like yeah. I, we've said it loads of times before. Like you could be the biggest guy in your gym, but it means, it means fuck all. Like literally, it means nothing. Like even in ultraflex, like 
you know, you could be the biggest natural guy there and it still means nothing. You could even be the biggest enhanced guy there and it still means nothing because you'll probably be on the pro circuit and you'll still like get, you know, you'll end up being against people that are three times as big as you. Like it's, there's just so many levels to it and it does make you realize, but it's good because it like motivates you and obviously it makes you sort of, it opens your eyes a little bit. It's like I was looking at the middleweights because that's what I'll be, like the, the, <clears throat> the category I'll be in next time and I was thinking like fucking hell like some of these guys are like really really impressive like I need to make sure that I'm like putting the work in because obviously yeah not that it makes any difference I'm not going to be like oh I'm going to need to train harder or anything like that but it does make you realize like just because you might be progressing well or you might be bigger than you were like yeah. you don't realize how many people are doing it as well like obviously you'll follow a fair few people on social media but there's always loads more that you didn't know that are doing it oh, yeah. that are fucking yeah. crazy as well like usually the ones that aren't on social media are the biggest ones like because they just get their head down and get on with it like, but yeah it was it was good i won't go into it too much because i think we got a question on it I, i'm pretty sure conman asked me a question about the uh the show um but finn went home after the show and decided to up his creatine dose by two grams he was like god i need to do everything possible now so i can get in the middleweight actually what happened was that. i came home and I prepped my rice and chicken, and I was like, I just want it so bad. Mate, actually, I was eating cream of rice watching the show. That's how much I wanted it right. And AJ and really? Osmond were laughing at me, taking the piss out of me. And in my head, I, was, I said to him, I was like, stop bullying me. But in the back of my mind, I was thinking, I just want it so much. They, they don't, they don't they? find it funny because I want it so bad. Why were they taking the piss out of your cream of rice? I don't know. They were just, having a laugh. They were just laughing at me because I, I want it that much, I think. I think they were just like they felt uncomfortable because they saw me and thought, "Wow, he's that mo- he's so motivated. Yeah, it's uncomfortable." So they were laughing at me. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Makes sense. Right, question time. Uh, do you want to go, mate? You can go into the one that you got asked about the. I don't like doing the... that. I don't like doing that. I have to go in order. Okay, fair enough. Go for it. One second. Ah. Oh. Okay, this is kind of. Um, so this is from Charlie Everlast. Uh, UK DFBA versus BMBF. Which do you prefer? And then pros and cons of each. Go can't for it, answer. Mate. Can't answer, not now. Fuck. Well, so you can't Sorry, Charlie. I'm going yeah, to tap out. See you later. Finn can take this one. Um, <laughs> I guess I feel, I feel like I've got to be... I don't know. I don't want to be like, this one's better. Because to be fair, like, I, I don't really... I, I don't have any allegiance the, yeah i don't have an allegiance to one side i'm not like favoring one one side or the other i think if you're a natural competitor you should do both i don't think you should be like oh the bmbf is way better or you could hear i don't like that whole side of the sport i think it, it it's a shame that the sport is like that um but every sport is always going to be like that you know there's all if there's like two organizations at the top like they're always going to be against each other aren't they they want they want the competitors they want the members etc um but yeah i i don't really think there's one that I prefer to be honest and that might sound like I'm being like I'm sitting on the fence and I'm not answering the question but I honestly wouldn't really say there's one that I prefer from what I've seen I think the BMBF shows huh purely yeah I think from what I've seen I'd like to do U cup uh, <laughs> no the the BMBF shows from what I've seen are a little bit more flashy which is good like it's cool like the light in and the smoke and stuff like but obviously when I competed it was COVID times, but even the UK FBA show that I went to before that, the the show was ran better, in my opinion. It, they're more organised, in my opinion, but it's not quite as flashy or maybe high, like I don't know what the what's the that's what's the word I'm looking for. Not like high end production value. Yeah, it's like higher production value BMBF. I I think anyway. But they're both really good. I think you would, should definitely do both if you're new to competing. And then you could always see which you prefer and even then still do both. Like the more shows, the better, I think. Even like with the WMBF now. And then obviously with like the two bros, the, the 92 bros, like the more, the better. I don't think it's a bad thing. I, I think, you know, it's, it's only more opportunity to compete, which is good. Um, pros and cons of each. Like I just said there, really, I'd probably say the pros of the BMBF is that it's a little bit more sort of like quali- like high quality or high sort of production, a bit more flashy. Um, cons, they're a little bit disorganized at times. Um, hopefully they don't listen to this. Um, and then UK FBA is the opposite. They're more organized, but it maybe is a little bit less flashy. But that is really, in my opinion, they're the only real differences. Other than that, like I, I don't, I'm not going to go into all the political side of it. I don't know all the ins and outs of it 
you know, etc. So I would just say, give them both a go, see which you prefer. Even if you prefer one more than the other, it's more chances to compete. So why not just still do both? Reckon. Right. Good answer, mate. Um, Anthony McMahon, um, fantasy football review. What a question. Thought we'd start off with this. Um, Finn's beating me by two points, I think you said. on the. Yeah, what, on the did I, what did I beat you by on the Oros? Uh, I, to be fair, mate, I stopped doing it after like ben, quarters or whatever. By he didn't, say, he didn't save my transfers. and then still, like, You were still like, miles behind and you haven't bought mate, me. It wasn't. I was like 20 points off. That's not miles. That's literally one good like, rotation behind. games. Yeah, fantasy football review. Uh, Finn's beating me by two points. Um, th- we had a similar team, apparently. Reached I said to Finn, Finn our, last, what, our last talk on Wednesday, I said, do you have Greenwood? And he goes, nah. In well, his had, team, he has I had to stick him in, mate. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. I'm not it's like I like have him in my team. Yeah, I have him in my team. You got and three, four, three. Yeah, three, four, yeah, three. Yeah, I'm three, five, two. Who's your, who's your three defenders? Is it Simakash, Trent, same, and Shaw? Same as yours, yeah. Ooh, yeah, fair enough. And then who's your front three? Is it Anto- Do you have Antonio? I've only got front two, Ings and Antonio. Okay. I think I might have that actually. Yeah, I'm not. You've got Ings, sure Antonio, and Tony. Oh yeah, yeah. But it, Tony was playing Tony like Blank. a false nine against Arsenal. Yeah, he was play, playing too deep. That's what it was. He was dropping deep. I wasn't a fan. He was, and he was just winning flick-ons and such to that. M- 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 is it M- He's M- only five point five million. Mino. That Mbwemo, yeah. Yeah, he looked decent. He looked really good. So yeah, might be might be a steal there. He's maybe and, one uh, to add in for game week four, game week four, maybe. game week five when when Brentford's uh, fixtures change. Maybe maybe put him in there. That's what it is. Right. Um, okay, go, next question. Do you want to go? I think the door just opened. I don't know if that's Sanaya. She's going to text me saying she can't get in. I heard the door open, but I don't I haven't heard anyone come in, so I'm not sure. It doesn't sound too enthusiastic, mate. I don't know if that's Sanaya. Fuck it. <laughs> no, I was trying to listen. I was trying to talk and listen. To see, you know, if I can... many minutes, to be fair. Uh, this yeah. is from our boy, Kieran Daly. He asked me, I think because last week I was like, mate, ask me, because I was a bit pissed off at him. So he's asked me. Hello. Sound. Can I see it now? He said, Hope you're well, lads. He put your and not you are. So already, come on. Come on, Kieran. Y O U apostrophe R E next time, please, mate. Uh, thoughts on people... teach that in London. Thoughts God. on people using isolate intra training over EAAs. I've seen people do this. Yeah, they use the clear way, don't yeah. they? Like the clear way isolate. Yeah. I, I personally. I've actually never, tr- I've tried it once actually, and I thought it tasted a bit chemically, you know, the clear way. I don't think it would sit as well with me, but that's my opinion. At the end of the day, an essential amino acid is literally just a breakdown of a protein. Like, so if, if you're being really, really meticulous, is there going to be a drastic, drastic difference? It's the same as on the newest J or one of the newest JP videos. He consumed his EAAs like two hours into the session and he was talking about the, the protein blunting effect. And obviously you want like an adequate amount of time to have an MPS spike. And I mean, everybody thinks that, or I've thought about it, but there's almost that practicality where you go, is it really going to be a game changer? So my personal opinions right now is I think it's uh, over analysis in general. And therefore, if you want to have a way, feel free. If you want to have an EAA, feel free. I'll stick to my EAs. That's, that's my, my thought process. I don't think this needs too much of a, like a, an in-depth breakdown, if I'm honest. There might be benefits and feel free. If you were to show me all the benefits and I was to say, you know what? Go for it. Maybe I would. Maybe a year from now, I'll be uh, team team uh, isolate intra intra isolate. But right now, I'll just take in the EA. I'll be good for that. What do you think to taking EAs out completely? What personally? personally what do you mean? Like so, so you know, Will Jones, we've taken his EAs yeah. out completely. How come? What was the rationale there? Save money. Yeah. Um, he trains for about two, I think he said he trains for about two and a half to three hours and he eats within half an hour either side. So I was oh, like, yeah. take him out then. Yeah, he asked me yeah. and he was like, he was like, is it really, are they that essential? And I was like, no. So although they are I called think, essential, I was like, they're not that essential if you're eating, you know, within close proximity. Like for us, like if you think session. about our sessions are like four hours or so and then travel time either side, Obviously, we take our food to Ultraflex, but we still eat 
half an hour or so before the session or maybe closer to an hour I'd say and then half an hour or so after like so it's gonna be if we think about it we eat at about two do we when we go to yeah, about ten, we, yeah we train ten past at about three and then we eat yeah. again at about seven half seven so it's like five yeah. and a half hours so if we have our intro like pretty much during the session it's pretty much perfect timing but for yeah. most people most of the time like they actually aren't that essential although they're called it who would have thought yeah. it eh? yeah there we go there no we it go. is interesting because it's one of them where like mo with most clients i'll say like utilize an eaa because yeah. especially when, when they apply they'll say how long they can train for and i'll sort of program around that and for most clients it's they'll say sort of like i can train as long as i need to train like most people will sort of be like that which is great yeah. and then often that will mean like a two and a half three hour session and then if you're not eating let's say an hour or so either side of that then i would still argue that it's probably worth having an eaa in the middle yeah, no, I agree. Or I agree. I a clear way, if you like clear way, if you want to do that, do that. Like you say, I'm, I'm, I'm the same opinion as you in regards to that. Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, how to create from this is from Wob, W B O Z Z. So Woboz, 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 Woboz. Uh, how to create a training split? I mean, this could be a podcast on its own. I don't know. Like, yeah. Sorry, God, mate, no. Next question. Mate, you just you just paid AJ last time to create your training plans, and then you just copied them. Didn't I don't have a clue what, what to do. Yeah, you were like, oh, this is this is what I, this is how I need to program. Um, but no, uh, you just look at it. I, I break break it down. If you're asking this question, you're probably I'm going to argue maybe a beginner or like quite quite early on in your training career. So start off with the basics. Uh, transition from full body to an, an upper lower to then maybe a push pull lower upper lower or a push pull lower push pull lower. Um, you go through those stages of transition that'll take you probably two to three years maybe longer um, do compound lifts do as little volume as possible with the maximum amount of intensity over a sustained period of time if you feel like you can get away with more do more if you feel like you can't recover do less and then no doubt over those couple of years you'll probably pick up enough cues and internal kind of feedback to the point where you can design your own training split and you won't have to ask the podcast questions about training splits I think that's quite a good answer with the most generic kind of approach. Training because it's split. so challenging. Did you say training split yeah, training program? Training split. Oh, okay. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter. Like, stop worrying yeah. about that. Like, literally, I think people put too much pressure on what, what split they're on or what's the perfect split or anything like that. Like, It'll never we've, be a we've done plenty split. of different ones. And at the end of the day, like, if you fucking train hard and do the basics right in and out the gym, you're going to grow. Like, like you say, if you're not recovering, then maybe look at changing your split. If you feel like you can do more, then maybe look at changing it. But like for the most part, you can make really good progress on any split, really, unless you're doing something like really stupid where you're missing body parts out or something like that. But yeah, yeah keep it basic. Yeah, no, nah, makes sense. One right, of these your question. 33 day splits where it's like, oh, I do legs every seven and a half days and I do this every 13 and <laughs> yeah. point six days. I gotta be. I gotta be ready for Thursday's PM legs. And then I, only get, like, I only get sixteen sleeps before my next legs seven session. All oh, right, yeah. <laughs> my legs Z session. God, that'd be awful. Oh yeah, I'm just in for leg legs Y today. Yeah, like I just gone through the <laughs> alphabet. Finish this meso. It's been a full fucking year. Legs Z <laughs> next week, and I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Back to A. Can't wait to see the the carryover strength. Oh, that'd be class. All right, this is from Sanaya. Ah, speaking of cinema, do you want to have a look at cinema? Do that full one. I'll I'll pay. Do the full thing. She said. Uh, What's the film? Who's got? Oh, for, uh, free guy. That, I've not free seen guy. it, but Princess, it looks says it looks good. We'll do that. Free guy. Yeah, the one you sent through it was the second one. All right, carry on. Who's got bigger arms? You are Reese. Oh, you do me on biceps. I do you on triceps. Yeah. And I would say, in relative terms, me. In yeah. absolute terms, you. Yeah, I'd agree. But I'd say yours, it's, it's hard because this is bodybuilding. Like, your arms... <laughs> this is bigger, bodybuilding, your, guys. Guys, this is bodybuilding. <laughs> this is bodybuilding. Your arms are bigger than mine because your frame... You're, you're smaller, like, so your arms are bigger than mine. Yeah, relative, saying, like, in relative terms. Yeah. It's like relative strength. I'm stronger than you. But I think most people... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I agree. Right. Um, this is another, this is me, be you, mate. This is just Pim versus Reese. 
Charfit 95. Uh, I think this is the guy that trains with Lewis a few times. Yeah. I've seen Charlie yeah. Walker. Um, his name is right? I think so. Yeah. He, uh, he seems like a sound lad. He seems yeah, like a, a nice, nice guy. guy. Yeah. I spoke to him about my, my lower training. Any chance of asking it about. in my box, Charlie? Fucking yeah. hell. Yeah. Uh, who would win in an MMA fight? You or Finn? Funny. I reckon now you do me, mate. I haven't got, I haven't got the energy. Right I now. hate. I think even, I've said that. I've answered shit like this before. Like I hate, mm-hmm. I hate shit like this. I hate fights, and I hate. I just don't get it. You know what I mean? Like, I've, I've never, never once would it cross my mind. Like, oh, I wonder if I could beat him up or if I could do him an MMA. <laughs> like, I've never thought that in my entire life. So I feel like I, I feel like I don't know. I feel like I could be quite good at it. But yeah. I feel like you're my um, center of gravity is very is a lot. Like, I'm talking like I'm a midget. I feel like my center of gravity is lower, and I could be quite like uh, speedy and like pacey. I feel like yeah. you haven't got that. I feel like you could have a wicked blow. You could give me a wicked I, blow doing MMA. I'll give you a good blow. Give me a good blow, and then we'll see. We'll do it after that. <laughs> give me a good blow, then we'll do MMA. Right. I reckon if I was to get you on the floor, mate, I'd do you on the floor. So, <laughs> yeah, I'll give you a wicked blow and then I'll do you on the floor. So, yeah, that'll be that'll be it. And then we'll just see. I think either way, whoever loses technically wins as well. So, yeah, the win win situation. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which, I think we should do this. Sounds quite interesting. Do it and film it for the podcast. <laughs> yeah, no, exclusive. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll the make only it. We'll, podcast. Yeah, that'll be it. Right. Your question, mate. This is Bar- Barbell Strength India. This is like a company. Let me have a look. Has a company messaged me? Barbell Strength India. Well, how do you find their profile? Click message and then oh. when you message. But yeah. 65 followers. I don't think it's a company. Oh, um, how often do you recommend pictures taken during a gaining phase? Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you for the question. <clears throat> great question um i think it depends i think feedback photos are, especially i think in, in in a gaming phase it's you can kind of take a step back and go the vast majority of the time photos in my opinion you just use them to monitor composition unless you're a complete beginner or potentially let's say you're jumping on certain substances for the first time it's naturally you're not going to be noticing a drastic change on a, a week-to-week basis i think it is good to get in a routine so yeah it's fin, fin make Absolutely yeah, blowing up. Changes. I mean, you've been 200 pounds at the same time as Sanai has been RDL in 100 kilos. So <laughs> last four years. Yeah, last four years. Just because I'm here doesn't mean you can do it. So, yeah. So, seven. Uh, yeah, that'll, that'll be my, yeah, that'll be 100 for seven. 100 for seven. <laughs> it's Sanai, two years later, 100 for seven. And with the, with the aim of working it up, that's what it will be. <laughs> um, but no, so, yeah, there's definitely going to be relevance, uh, 100%. I'd, I'd most likely say once a week would be fine if you want. I think there could be benefit as well to doing more just because you're going through the rounds of doing your posing and, and kind of keeping that consistency. And there's always going to be changes where, let's say, for example, if your check-in day you're with yourself is Sunday and you're training slightly earlier on a Saturday or you're having an off-plan meal on a said day, it's good to see. Like Photos are never going to be a bad thing, so you shouldn't be limiting them. But I would almost be taking stock from your actual let's say body weight creeping up likewise your training performance because that's going to be a main driver of your look and a lot of individuals as well psychologically might struggle with the idea of seeing themselves slowly get softer and softer and softer and softer so motivation when you get leaner and leaner it's really good because you're like oh my god this is new this is i haven't seen this before but when you're getting a bit soft you're like oh and in reality i feel like especially with natural bodybuilding you're not going to notice a drastic change on a week-to-week month-to-month setting that should be driven off your your logbook and you know let's say the scale slowly creeping up so yeah uh, what's your current protocol you, is it once a week still with you oh, i do you take that for every session technically you pose in, pose in every session and then yeah. most weeks i'll do photos here as well like with the black background but they're, they're just not great they're better i mean in the gym with the better lighting and stuff but yeah i would i would say the more the better like it depends on the level that you're at like if you're just someone who let's say is just you know, not thinking about competing or anything like that and not even doing like let's say bodybuilding poses or anything you're just sort of seeing how you look then i would argue that you don't need to do it quite as often you don't need to worry about posing and taking as regular photos but yeah i would say really as often as you possibly can 
and then like what Reese just said, like obviously some individuals might not want to because they might be like, oh, I don't like getting softer. But then I'd argue you almost need to meet that head on and accept it and yeah. look at it and, and it, you, it will only benefit you taking more photos, not even just for the here and now, but for looking back in the, in the future as well. So you can look back and, and look at your previous photos, your previous data. Let's say you, you know, you're on uh, a gaining phase prior to a, a contest prep. You can then always compare with the next gaining phase and the next one and the next one, like you would compare a contest prep. And you can see, well, last time I was at you know this way, I looked like this. Now I look like this. And like you almost wish that you you weren't wanting to take photos at the time, but if you didn't, you'll wish in the future that you did. So I would just say the more more often the better. Yeah, I agree, mate. Spot on. No issue at all with that. Um, oh, Alex Kingsley, a new sign up. I'm not too sure if he's going to be listening to this. Um, a guy sign up from Ultraflex Leads. Do you count your EAEs within your protein and calorie count for the day? Yes, yes, anything that has calories. That's, I, I dislike any kind of thing. Like, do you, because, should you count this? Should you yeah, count but because most EAAs don't have nutritional information on the back, so yeah. they don't, they don't yeah. class them as protein. Mm, yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Be the same as like someone who's nailing, let's say, loads of like I don't know, uh, condiments, or let's say having X amount of fizzy drinks that have like, like loads and loads of like ketchup on the side and not weighing it. Yeah, that could be that could be an option, but um, didn't crack on with that. So yeah, um, <laughs> but no. So yeah, there, there's definitely options there, and it, I always think just track it. What what can get tracked can get managed. There we go. Go with that. Uh, he also asked another one, um, kind of going, it's not a double whammy, but I thought I'd answer both at the same time. Top three daily habits to improve productivity and training slash work. I think there's only one main habit and that's the, the, the classic structure and just a routine. I don't think there needs to be three. Like that's literally... Yeah, but I would say you can break that down. Yeah. Like it's definitely. very easy to go, just have a better structure, but how do you do that? So I, I would yeah. say sleep, set yourself a sleep time and a wake time and stick to it. That'd be number one. I would say do something productive as your first task of the day. So whether it be steps, cardio, meal prep, planning your day out. Like I'll do, I'll do all kind of all of those. I don't do steps at the minute, but I do my cardio. I do all those within the first like half an hour. Always sets you yeah. up for a more productive day. Um, and then prioritizing. That'd be a pretty good one. So prioritizing what you need to do and and making sure that you tick those tasks off. Like, log, like obviously, like obviously using a, a whiteboard or a journal or something like that. Like I, I kind of said then in the, the second one, but that's always a good one. Um, yeah, I'd say that'd be my main three. So sleep routine, product, productive, like be productive first thing in the morning and then journal slash set tasks. Yeah. Do yeah, you agree? I agree. Yeah, I agree. I'm not a massive fan of uh, I only ever write stuff down if I um, if I feel like I'm over encumbered. Is that a word? It definitely helps though, mate. Like literally today, like, I wrote down, so I always write down what I do, but like, literally like CV and food prep before seven, check-ins before 12, Evan set up before two, sunbed, yeah. podcast, slate opposing, like I've just written like everything down that I need to do. So, yeah. I, And obviously I would have done it anyway and I wouldn't have forgotten anything, but it yeah. helps and it also makes me feel more productive and it gives you that sort of gratitude and tick it off. Like, oh yeah, I'm doing it. Right. Yeah. I don't like, yeah, it's weird. I don't get much gratitude. I just kind of do the same. Like the only things I ever write down is if I have like a bunch of startups and I know what dates, cause I, that'll be something where I can plot it in. So like, for example, I have like a note section where I'll literally just write startups. And now if I have like six startups over the next 10 days, I'll be like, right, this is the date that they're going to get their sheet sorted. This is the date they're going to actually get their intro video. This is the day they start. So I have that in line. If there's any external kind of work, but other than that, I have everything already on like a, I have a Google sheet set up with everyone's check-in day in a, in a list and then pretty much more what I, my daily structure and routine is. So technically say I could write it down, but I don't look through it and try and tick it off as I go. I mean, yeah. so that's personal. Yeah, I don't, I don't tick it off. I literally just have it no. there and it's like just a habit now so I literally get off the bike and I do that and then I prep the food yeah. and then I get ready like just become a routine yeah it'd be lovely I said to you it'd be nice when I'm not doing like two hours worth of like tasks in the morning that aren't work like in the sense of obviously you could call cardio and step to work but by the time I've like made all my meals um done my cardio done my steps I'm like two hours into the day and I'm probably like, right, only now an extra hour how long is your walk? Yeah. 
because that's the only probably well that's probably no, you'll still do a bit of cardio or you'll still do a walk like it won't be yeah like you almost expect it to be like oh i've got two hours you won't because you'll still do yeah. bits and you'll still prep your food and everything like it's oh, just yeah you won't go on as long a walk or you won't do as long cardio yeah yeah no i agree i agree but uh but yeah like i said having like to, to be very basic the structure and routine is key and you can break that down into a fair few different subsets. that's a good question though. at the same time like yeah it was, it was and i always think as well just like crack on with what you need to do like i think you that you could actually argue especially if you're not productive and you're, you're let's say you, you you don't have the habits in place i'd be asking why because i know when it comes to like uni work and as such like first year you could say the same if you're not that interested you do put stuff off and you procrastinate and you, you may you might not do things to be as productive as possible and i remember like you know the the first lockdown i had loads of uni work like towards the latter end of the lockdown and i remember like i was so i wasn't demotivated but i was like i just don't want to be doing this i just don't want to be doing this and like this year finishing my uni stuff I wasn't, there wasn't even a question of motivation because I was like, I literally do not have the time to push this back. Like I won't be able to get everything done. So it was where like the kind of just externally, it was like, right, this needs to be done. And maybe that's me maturing, growing up and getting on with it and thinking, right, this is what needs to occur now. But there is that degree where I'd be saying like, it's sometimes you might not be doing the things that you might want to be doing and that might be impacting your productivity. Yeah, I was chatting. I've had a chat with a couple of clients about something similar to that this week. Not about productivity, but about stress. But I was basically yeah. saying to them, like, you need to earn your stripes to get to a point where you you can not do those things that you don't want to do. Like, we've all been through periods of time, like for example, university, school, even like working jobs you don't want to work. Like, you have to do that in order to get to where you want to get to. Like. Obviously, I'm not going to say like me, when I was at uni and working all the jobs and stuff because I've spoke about that before. But like, I think people forget they'll they'll look at someone who's in a position that they maybe want to get to, or like even for us, for example, like we've spoke about this before in terms of how many levels there are to coaching and stuff. But people will look at where we're at and and think, oh, like shit, I want to get to that point where you know I can do check-ins whenever I want and I don't have another job to worry about and I don't have to do you know I don't have to work at the pub or whatever like and that's fine like but you have to realize that you have to work at the pub to get to that point like you have to kind of earn your stripes to get there so I don't I don't think people really realize that and I've said this before that's something we should actually talk about more because it's quite relatable like for people that are in that position to realize that you know that's normal you go through that to get to the level where you can plan your own day completely how you want like, but it doesn't just happen. My mum said the same thing to me the other day. She was like, to, she said something like, uh, yours and Finn's life is so cool. And I was like, it's not really. And she was like, you're 22 and 24. You have no, like, you can plan everything. You can get up when you want in theory. You can move your work around. You can go to Rotherham and train in the best gym in England. Yeah. Like, it is you know like, what I mean? You can plan we are everything. in a very good spot. Like, I don't, I hate saying that, like, oh, we are lucky. But we are because we could have easily not liked training and just not done it and then not found out like what we want to do as a career. Like well, that could have easily happened. Loads of people don't find what they want to do as a career for years. So we are lucky in that sense, but also like we've said before, you know, it comes down to work ethic and there's not many people when that we know or speak to that would put in the time and the effort that we do. Like, obviously I know you're going to the cinema tonight, but like for the most part, we would get off this podcast. We'd be having another meal. Then we'd be doing form feedback for the next two hours then we'll be having another meal. Then we'll be going to bed. Like, it's not like, oh, Tuesday night. Like, obviously great. Like, for you tonight it is, but most of the time it's not. Like, yeah. it's <laughs> definitely not. hard work. Like, you know, today, yeah. like, obviously, I know you've been busy as well. Like, well, I haven't had a minute. I've still got, like, loads of people to get back to, but yeah. it's just kind of how it is. I think people don't really realise that as well. I was saying that to a client as well about how the world's just going soft and there's always a reason now behind it rather than just you need to fucking work harder. It's always yeah. like, oh, but this or but that. And it's like, oh, you know, I, I can't do it because of this. It's like 20, 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, like if that was the case, you know, you'd have been told to just fucking get on with it. Yeah. Not the case anymore, is it? No. Right. Your question is it mine? Uh, it's mine. mine. It's mine. Okay. Sorry. This is from Socrates again. He's coming back. Oh, he, loves, he loves the questions. He's a good lad. That, don't, I don't think he's ever messaged me, but he, he loves the questions. Um, so current supplement routine and opinion on GDAs in off season. Um, you actually did a good story when you did your Q and A on your um, on your Instagram, didn't you? I think you outlined like your morning, your AM, your AM subs. 
and then PM subs. I feel like you kind of went through a breakdown. Yeah, I think I did a few weeks yeah. back. Um, so to keep it basic, because I'm not going to go into absolutely everything, the, the, the intricacies, the ones that spring to mind, uh, let's say a pre-workout, so a stimulant-based pre, non-stimulant-based pre, um, intra-workout, highly branched psychodextrin, uh, potentially taurine can be utilized in an EAA or, uh, or maybe away. even a... Yeah, a clear way has to be a clear way. Uh, team, I'm team EAA as mentioned, so EA uh, there. And then post um, slash pre or whatever it's going to be, uh, a whey protein. Uh, I, I supplement with KSM 66 ashwagandha, so just ashwagandha in general. Um, and then there's a few other like accessories here and there. So for example, I use uh, Strom Support Max Neuro PM. I also utilize Strom's Digest Max that Sanai gave me that I actually rate quite highly, especially when, when food gets a little bit lower. Um, and to be fair, like I'm trying to think off the top of my head, I'd have to list out absolutely everything. Creatine, um, like five to 10 grams, trend day, non-trend day. Like I said, we probably should actually make a list. It would be, this would be something that me, we've spoke about, like doing like a little video library about like form, uh, like, like, uh, an exercise library. And this would be something where it'd be like a full supplementation guide video where you just, we would just walk you through the supplements that we take and then the rationale for them. But there's plenty of others that there's going to be benefits from, but the, the absolute basics and I always say to people like clients upon startup, I'll go through a supplementation guide and I'll say, this is something that we'll refer to, but like, please don't get this twisted where you're going to be looking at these supplements, seeing the recommended dose and things is going to be more effective. Than, yeah. Then you are you sleeping for, let's say a sleep cycle extra per night. Are you making sure to get in your water goal? Like the, the vast majority of, uh, of supplements don't actually do that much in the grand scheme of things. So I would just look at it and be thinking, right, how's your training? Do you think you need a little bit of a boost while you're training? If so, maybe, a pre-workout i would argue you don't need one could you utilize caffeine if you're training earlier in the day it potentially can you hit your protein without whey protein if so you don't need a protein unless it's a clear way when you're training which is definitely needed um which is not Please essential don't clear way it's called now yeah and then uh and then potentially the only thing i'd really recommend and even then you could say creatine isn't 100 percent recommended but i think just to try and tick off what creatine can kind of give you i feel like obviously you're going to struggle to try and get that in through red meat so i would recommend a creatine more atp more energy more energy more chance of overload it's not going to be a bad idea so yeah there's not many supplements that i'd be saying you have to take there's none that are essential but there's a few that might give you a percent here or there that's not going to be a bad idea yeah i'd only say caffeine and creatine are the ones where you'd be like why would you not take them like yeah. caffeine like not not to the point where you're having it all the time and reliant on it but just like utilizing caffeine for the cognitive benefit pre-workout i would say like yeah you can you can utilize that as a, as a tool for that benefit um a couple of ones that you didn't say that like i would say omega-3s are a really good one because people tend yeah. to especially with like a traditional bodybuilding diet people will tend to have quite um or struggle to get a decent amount of essential fatty acids in the diet uh, especially like for example on like a contest prep when your fats are going to be pretty low um yeah. a, a vitamin d supplement would be pretty good you're going to struggle to get a huge amount from food you're going to struggle to get a huge amount from the sun especially if you live in colder sort of climate countries um so those two would be quite good um they're the only real two sort of general health subs that i would recommend to, to take majority of the time you could all you could sort of you know maybe not supplement vitamin d throughout the summer if you you know work outside or whatever it may be you get plenty of sunlight then you might not need to um but quite a lot of people do tend to be um deficient in, in vitamin d uh he also asked me opinion on gdas in the off season so i'll cover that basically i would oh, yeah. say i would say they're a good tool to utilize um again it's similar to what we were just saying there. Do an outline of what a gda is because some people won't know like so the actual a GDA method. is a, uh, a glucose disposal agent. So basically it's going to help you utilize your carbohydrates a little bit better. It's going to help shuttle the, the carbohydrates into the muscle a little bit easier if you think of it like that. It's almost like a, just like a digestive supplement. So it's to, to aid digestion, to, to aid the uptake of carbs, potentially help you digest the carbs a little bit quicker, a little bit easier, potentially get on a little bit more carbohydrates. But I would argue it's, again, like any other supplement, not needed, not essential. I would say it is more so of even like a luxury item because they're not the cheapest of, of supplements. And they're, I'd say, quite rare to, that you'll have people using those. Like, not, not massively, but they, they're a lot rarer than someone taking creatine or uh, EAAs or protein, whatever it may be, like the basic kind of stuff. So they are, I guess, a bit more of a luxury item. 
Um, but yeah, it could definitely be better. Be better in the past? Huh? Have you utilized them in the past? Have you used them? I the had some ages ago, mate. When I was, I have, yeah. When I, I wasn't was a like massive, probably fan. twenty, so like three, four years yeah. ago, and I didn't really notice much benefit, to be honest. Um, like I was I on, did. but I could argue that the foods that I was consuming weren't great, and my lifestyle wasn't great. It was when I was like PTing and rushing about all the time, drinking like three oat smoothies a day and stuff. Like, and I was just <laughs> shitting every every five minutes. It was a nightmare. Um, I was on like six thousand calories or something stupid, but I, I, I was I don't think I was uptaking any more than a thousand calories of it. Um, so yeah, <laughs> the GDA was probably making it worse. But I think yeah. for some for like for some individuals, like I've had clients where we've been like on nine. I think we get eight eight fifty nine hundred carbs, and we tried mm. diet breaking. We tried changing foods loads, and we like we simply fats were high as well. Like it wasn't like fats were two two five grams. Um, <laughs> five, so like yeah. even then, I was like, we could potentially try it. <laughs> But uh, we, he didn't end up getting any. Um, it's also one of those things where I would argue, like I, I say this to my clients all the time, your appetite isn't going to be good when you're in the gaining phase. The, the, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a difference between digestion and appetite. And a lot of people get them sort of paired together. So they'll, they'll think that they've got, they'll be like, oh, my appetite is, you know, it's not going to be good because I'm in a gaining phase. But then they also mistake that for the fact that their digestion is awful and they feel bloated all the time. They go into the toilet four or five times a day. So there's a difference there and a GDA could potentially help with that if, if you're struggling to get enough carbs in and, and it could potentially help. So yeah, I would say they're a luxury. They're not necessary, but they're worth potentially trying out and, and looking into if you are struggling to get a, a decent amount of carbs in. Sound. Yeah. Good answer to be fair, mate. No issues there. Right. Um, um have a look. See what we got here. Um, Comran Bfit, uh, he asked you a question, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, when to know? Uh, when to know to add or remove a certain movement or certain amounts of sets? So how to know when, basically? Yeah. What you What are you looking for? What, what When do you know that a movement has ran its course, or when you need to make a manipulation? Okay. So. First of all, I would say before you can even question that, you need to look at execution because a lot of the time people will be like, oh, this is stalling and I'm going to take it out. And it's like, well, how's your form looking? And they haven't even established that first. So execution needs to be the primary focus. Then I would say from there, you need to establish your effort. So again, if you're going into the session one week, like just, oh, I'm just a bit tired today. I'm not going to train as hard. Or we, we say it, clients say, oh, it's just a bit of a, I was a bit weak today because they didn't drink any water or they didn't sleep. Like, so you need to establish those kind of basic things. All of that needs to be established before you can accurately assess whether or not a movement is stalling or not, because you can't just say a movement's stalling because you're not sleeping or because your stress is high or because you're not drinking enough water. So all of those basic variables need to be established first. If they are established, then I would say if a movement hasn't progressed within the last, let's say three rotations, then I would look to potentially change that for a different exercise or a variation of that same exercise. So, and what I mean by not progressed doesn't necessarily just mean the numbers. It's either not progressed through reps, through load, through internal feel, through slowing the tempo down. There's loads of ways that you can progress a movement. So if it's not progressed across maybe those four main parameters, then I would look at, okay, we probably need to change that. Uh, you could also question though, again, you know, why is it not progressed? And that's going to, tend to look at what I said before, whereas if you've not nailed all those basics outside of the gym, then your ability to progress is going to be a lot, it's going to be a lot more difficult to do so. Um, so yeah, I would say if, if maybe like three rotations where you've not progressed through either load reps, internal feel or tempo, then I would maybe look at changing it. Um, but you could, like I say, not just change the exercise, you could just change the variation of the same exercise. So you could add a pause in, you could slow the tempo down, you could change the tempo, you could add a band to the movement. You don't have to necessarily change it completely. Like you could even do a low incline Smith to a slightly higher low incline Smith or a low incline Smith to a slightly lower incline Smith. Like you know, the, the slight angle change could make a difference even by like five or 10 degrees. It's going to incorporate some different fibers and pressing at a different angle. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say in terms of knowing when to maybe change one. Uh, in terms of when to drop a set, I would just look at your recovery. So 
if you're let's say doing a leg day and you come back around to the second leg day which is four days later and you're noticing that every single week you're just not feeling like your legs are well recovered then i would look at that volume within the leg session also look at your ability to progress so i have a client called dan today it was his check-in and he is quite okay he likes high volume he's, he's coming from like a higher volume background so to start off training with him i was happy to go high volume because we were assessing his execution we we're assessing his intensity as he's gone on because he's doing a uh, we're during a diet phase at the minute as well so as he's gone on we've brought down his volume and week by week i look at his numbers and if a set isn't seeming to progress then we just take it out so like this week for example we took out a couple of his presses so down from three sets to two sets because the first two sets have been progressing or maintaining and the third set's just been maintaining or going backwards and it's like well what is that third set adding in uh, other than pretty much junk volume uh, obviously as you're getting leaner as well when you're dieting your recovery capabilities are going to drop off because you've got less energy availability you've got less body fat so i would say you know if you're in a diet phase and your performance is dropping off then you just need to drop the volume it might feel weird and a lot of people think it, it's a bit counterintuitive because they think well my performance is dropping so surely i need to do more to make up for that but you actually need to do the opposite you need to do less in order to hold on to your performance and hold on to your strength so yeah, that's, I've probably missed a, f a few things there because there's loads of other reasons as to why you could drop the, the volume. Um, but I think that's the one of the main ones would be you know, your recovery or the two main ones would be your recovery and your performance. Um, and they kind of dictate everything that we do, really. Yeah, no, I agree. And at the same time, I think there's, there's that level where you speak about recovery capabilities, like you mentioned in a, in a fat loss phase, but then you could also argue just through overall loading and uh, your experience in training. So yeah. the stronger you get, in general, the, the, if you think about it from an external loading standpoint, the, the higher it's going to be. Like, for example, two years from now, my pressing um, loading is going to be far greater, I'd imagine, than it is now. So therefore, you could say, well, most likely I'll be doing less total work, should we say, from a set perspective. But my overall kind of weekly volume might stay fairly similar because the loading is up. So you almost have to understand that there's going to be a degree where, for example, with Comran, like let's say if we were to look at him, like he's, his pulling is strong, his pressing isn't the best. Therefore, we'd imagine if his pressing was to be on the same realms of his pulling, his pressing volume might be slightly lower than it is currently. You might not be able to get away with, let's say, eight working sets of a press, uh, like main press compounds. You might only be able to get away with seven in a session or six for, uh, potentially. And you almost have to go through that stage. And, but, and as you mentioned earlier, like earning your stripes, you have to earn the right to kind of reduce your volume. Like I've heard a few clients where they say, oh, mate, I see you do one set on this move or two sets so any chance I can like I think it'd be really good and I go well you can but your accuracy is poor so one set like for example for Comrade on a leg press mate like we've seen his leg press we've seen his RDL if we just gave him one set like it would be there, there's the a chance that, times that he'd yeah the amount of times that he'd yeah. fucked that one set and it's you've wasted it yeah. you've wasted that chance yeah Exactly. So yeah, there's, there's always a degree where you go, right, well, that internal feel as mentioned, uh, as Finn mentioned, is going to be key. Likewise, the, the loading kind of model, should we say, but there's so many mechanisms that go into it. And I think Finn gave a, a good kind of backing uh, to, to what you'd be looking for. So Conman asked me, good things and bad things about the teens that competed in the same show as Slater. So uh, I don't want to be harsh and be like, well, this was bad and this was good. Uh, the, yeah. the team that won, uh, James, was really, really good. Um, his upper body was a lot stronger than his lower body, but he was still really, really good. Um, his back was very good. Um, his shape was really nice. His structure was really good, really wide clavicle. Um, but yeah, his, his lower body was a little bit lagging, but not enough to where you'd be like, oh God, his lower body's really bad. Like just a little bit lagging behind, which is very normal for a team competitor. I'm going to have to let Shannon in, mate. One sec, let me pause it. Sorry, guys, just had to pause it to let Shannon in and Reese has disappeared. He's gone for a wee. Um, so what did I say? Uh, yeah, his upper body was very good. His lower body was still good, but a little bit lagging behind. Um, he obviously won. The guy that came second was massively under-muscled, but he was... <laughs> I think he came second because the guy that came third was a little bit up himself, but I'm not going to go into all that. Like That's just my opinion. Um, but yeah, the guy that came second was under-muscled, posing could improve a lot um but that's very common with with teens like james's posing was actually really good for a teen and the guy that came third was also under muscled again his posing wasn't great he had classic trunks on for some reason um so yeah like all those like minor things that you would kind of expect as a teen competitor like you know posing 
not having enough muscle, um, little things like maybe wearing the wrong trunks or having the wrong tan. Like they're all basics that you shouldn't get wrong. And obviously if you've got a coach, then you probably won't get wrong. But even still, sometimes people will get wrong. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to go through like really good things and bad things. I guess that gives you a bit of an, uh, an accurate representation of what is pretty common for a team. Um, and that is usually that they are under muscled, which is just a case of time for most people. Because, you know, if you're a teen and you let's say you started training at 16, you still only trained for maybe two, three years. So you just need more time. Um, but also the, those basics of posing, that shouldn't really be a problem. Like you shouldn't let that be the issue as to why you win or lose. Likewise, your trunks or your tan. Um, but yeah, the, the the primary problem that most teens have is just that they need more muscle. Um, but whether or not that'll be an issue for Conran, I would argue probably not. Um, but it's very hard to tell when you've never been, or I've not seen him lean. So it's very hard to tell. Um, but yeah, that that is the, the the primary sort of issue that teens would have is just that they need more time. Yeah. And Conman will struggle because he's on such low food already. Yeah. Tidy up phase. Two weeks in, so low food. Just so, so, I'm just on so, no food, mate. That's what he says. But no, nah, that's all good. Um, Woody's Fitness. Uh, any good gyms in Cardiff? I don't know. Like I, I, The thing there. is, I always find questions like this funny. Like Cardiff is quite a big place. Like, ask, uh, are you ask walking? Auburn, he'll know. Yeah, that would actually be quite a good one. Messi, yeah, message Jack Thorburn. I don't let think him know he's where from you Cardiff, to be honest, but I know that no, he's from Wales, isn't he? You'll know yeah. he's from Wales, yeah. Yeah, I trained. Um, I trained in a pure a few times. The, the, the George in Cardiff, there. insane. Yeah, insane, fantastic <laughs> atmosphere, ridiculous. Like no other I'm, pure, it's ridiculously good. Yeah, I think that was three, and I went to three different ones, and it was like they each one. I was like, right, this is shit. This is shit. This I've is never shit. been. You... I've never even been to Wales in my life. Fair enough. Yeah. I want to go. I'd like to go. Mm -hmm. It was decent, too. Fair. It was. It was a nice place. I'm just yeah, scared. I'm just scared. I'm scared of flying, so I can't go. Yeah. No, it makes sense, mate. Makes sense. See. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm scared of car uh, travels over two hours. I'm just like, oh god, right. no, I can't do that. I thought you were gonna yeah, say you're scared of Cardiff. Cardiff, yeah, no, I am. Really it's scared there. of Cardiff. Got, yeah, just got such bad memories there. I used to see a girl who lived there, just such bad memories. I can't even think about it anymore. I just get so emotional. <laughs> God, I've imagine. only got right. one more question. Um, yeah, that's Sam. I was going to eat about six, so that's cool. Yeah, I need to. Um, <laughs> this is from Will Bertolini Fitness, which is a cool name. Uh, He's asked me if, a question, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I think he, I spoke to him, yeah, I remember his name. What is your go-to working set song slash genre when training? Anything that drives emotion. I think I've answered that before. Paul Potts. No. <laughs> Paul, Potts. <laughs> Paul Potts. Paul Potts or Susan Boyle. Yeah. And I'm not even joking. Like they're the go-tos at the minute. Yeah. No, I, I can't. I can't agree. Like I, I don't know who either. Are. I know who Susan Boyle is. I don't know. You don't know Paul Potts, is. mate. You never lived. That's Niall. No, That's Niall Bergen about Paul Potts. Yeah, I know. I see you talking about like just <laughs> on, on the story, and I was like, I don't even want to. I can't. I don't even want to know. I'm just like, ah, oh, sound. Wait, That's so Paul cool. Potts is good. I'll, I'll play you. His, I'll play you the song that I used for my true spot yesterday. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, anything that drives emotion, like my my genre of to be fair, songs. opera, like opera, is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what? It, is that what Paul does? Is that what Big Paul does? Big Paul. Yeah. Big Paul. Yeah, he does a bit of opera. Yeah. Yeah, he loves that. I bet he, he, he signed one song off and he was like, he said something at the end, like he was like, I hope you stiff leg deadlift sets go well, guys, or something like that. After he sang his song, and then he was like, I know so many people are going to be listening to this just before their stiff leg deadlift or their true Yesterday. squat. Yesterday's pre true squat was Susan Boyle, Wild Horses. And then the actual true squat set itself was Paul Potts, uh, Ness and Dorma, it's called. Fair enough. Fantastic, that. Yeah. So anything like I said, anything that drives emotion. I wouldn't be able to give a single genre. Any, I like to listen to songs that take me back to when I was about, like between eight and thirteen. That can I can have some kind of recollection from, and they don't even have to be anything like nothing sad, like just weird things. I'm like, oh, that. Yeah, I don't only really listen to Paul Potts and Susan Boyle. Like I have loads of other yeah. songs that I can use, but like I've said before, I, I think it's over, I think people overuse or over yeah. rate music and its role that it can have. I think at the end of the day, you know when people are like, oh my God, I forgot my headphones, I can't train. It's like, well, you can't. Yeah. 
uh, you just have to get after it. Yeah, no, I agree. Right, that's pretty much everything, mate. I had a few more, but it was like they, they, they weren't the, I'm not going to say the best questions, but it's just nothing really that's like fantastic. Like, Comran, if you wear Monster Factory in public, are you instantly massive? No. No. Um, Sam Barsby, off topic question, but where do you get your gym clothing from? He goes to warehouse, so clearly he's seen me. He's not seen. I only wear one. I have two T-shirts that have three of each. So, yeah, and Finn's pointing to his FK Physiques medium T-shirt. Extra large, mate. Yeah, everyone, everyone believes that's extra large. Mate, but no, that's pretty much mate. everything. That's pretty much everything, mate. Oh, okay, here we go. You, you're not... Oh, you're going to be able to see that. Your camera's not good enough, mate. Your camera's not good enough. Oh, I think I can see XL. Yeah, I think I did see an XL. And it is tight on me. I, I'm Guys, make sure, make sure you click on 1080p. That's what it is. This is going to be a, this is going to be a thumbnail. We don't have a thumbnail. We have a set thumbnail. But yeah, I know. And I have to do it. I mean, I mean the admin, admin man does it, doesn't he? Me. Admin, yeah, not you. Not you. Admin man. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, that's everything. Um, Finn, do you have anything to, to leave us with? Or do you want me to go for the outro? No, mate. Anything that you guys No, no. Fine. Thank you for listening. All good. Yeah, all good. Again, appreciate all the story tags. We actually got, me we and Finn both said this, time, we actually yeah. got a fair few last time. So clearly, either the title or people are just listening and going, you know what? What should I call I'm this one? Because I have to think every time. Yeah. What, how, um, what, what question do we get asked? Is there any ones that we... That highlight? one was good about the routine. Yeah. Building... What was the question? It was like top, top three tips for a, um, for a productive... No, no, it wasn't that. Let me find it. Top three daily habits to improve productivity in training work. Well, Alex, the new sign-up, first podcast that you've asked questions to. I don't know how to bring that down. Top, top, three, top, three, top three habits to enhance productivity. Yeah. Sort in bodybuilding, you could, you could maybe it might be a bit too long. It might not fit. Yeah, yeah. Coming from the podcast that is once you're in, you're in. But <laughs> too long. The title too long. just takes up too much room. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's like I said, guys, twenty episodes ticked off, which is quite mental to think. I feel like we haven't done twenty, but, but hey, have. if here's to the first twenty. We'll be sitting here doing 40, 60, 80, and then all the way to 100 eventually, which will be quite crazy to think. But no, again, appreciate all the story tags we got last time. And it does mean a lot because it means that your followers will see it. And then likewise, they might actually go and follow the page or likewise to the next podcast, which in turn results in potentially more questions. So therefore more content for us to go through in we our weekly little podcast series. So uh, if you've got any questions, uh, pretty much Tuesday, we put up the question box. So feel free to ask. Um, other than that, Again, appreciate you guys if you're still here and I uh, appreciate all the people who are, who are listening in and likewise the ones who are asking questions and story tags. Anyway, other than that, hopefully everyone's having a good day, such a good evening and we'll catch you in the next podcast.